Hey guys, it's Karina with Karina Loves to Plan. Welcome back to my channel. So I have a few ink swatches, or no, few new inks to swatch, but I also have a new pen to unbox and a new pen to show you guys. Let's get started. The first pen I'm gonna show you guys is something that I got from the Planners Gonna Plan conference. They are called the Angel Shop and they specialize in a lot of stationary goods, a lot of rollerball pens, but I think the fountain pens are something that they've introduced um, just to re well, I say recently, but the owner of the shop, Angel, her dad actually is a, she said fountain pen fanatic. So with the help of her dad, they created a line of fountain pens. And this particular model is called the Tiffany model. And just looking at that, like look at the beads, the top of the pen there, and it is more of like a metal body. So it is a little bit heavier. And then you've got the clip here, which is actually a little bit stiff. There's not much that you could really do with that clip, but then look at the design on there and that color is absolutely gorgeous so this is a snap cap listen to that just oh love that and i'll show you the nib but it's like a little inlaid hooded nib and it is a steel nib and then you can see the feed in there so yes, it is a steel nib and it only comes in the fine and it is a cartridge. It comes with a, a cartridge. Now, Angel said these are exclusive or proprietary to her brand, but if anybody knows of any cartridges or converters that could possibly fit this pen, please let me know. What I think I'm gonna end up doing with this is actually cleaning this out once this is all done and then refilling it with all of my own inks. But this was $20 at the Planners Gonna Plan conference and it was $20 Canadian. And if you look on her website, they're actually a really, really reasonably priced fountain pen with a steel nib and it writes beautifully. Like it's just such a beautifully made pen. For me personally, it is a little bit narrow um, for really long writing sessions. Now you can post this if you do want to, it does post. And actually with the weight of it, it doesn't back weight it at all. I don't normally post this pen, but look at how deep it does post. It posts really well and it's very secure there. So for those who do like to post their pens, it doesn't back weight it at all. The pen is very nicely balanced. And I'll show you just a quick writing sample of this pen here. And comparing the size of the Tiffany Angel, sh of the Angel Shop Tiffany Fountain pen, we've got the Pilot Kakuno, the Lamy All Star. You can see how narrow it is compared to these two, the Pelican, Pelcon M600. So it is longer than all of those pens, but once unpost or sorry, uncapped, it is a long pen, but it is quite narrow. And it is actually quite a good weight. I think it is slightly heavier than the Pelcon M600, which is not the heaviest pen I own, but you can definitely tell the size difference there. So this is the Angel Shop Tiffany Fountain Pen with a fine nib and I'm writing in it with the black cartridge. And it is actually a very smooth writing fine nib and it actually feels quite wet. So it, I feel like it writes more towards like a medium fine versus just a fine and I really, really like it. I love the look of the pen. I love the weight of the pen. While yes, it is a little bit narrow, it does have a grip section that has that uh, triangular grip in there to help anybody with grip but for a $20 pen I highly recommend it and you get so many beautiful different designs as well so love this pen the next pen I have is actually from Amazon in the US and I ordered it from the US from Amazon particularly because I haven't found this particular color uh, on any other retailer. So yes, it is a pilot. Let us open it up. So it's got a cardboard sleeve and ooh, look at that. I actually really like the casing of this. It's quite simple. 
but do you guys recognize this model pen? Before I do that though, is there anything else underneath here that I'm missing? So this is the Pilot Pereira in Ivory. And this is a smaller pocket pen from Pilot. And I'll actually show you the size in relation to the Tiffany fountain pen, but also some other fountain pens from Pilot. So you guys get an idea of the size, but I love the really classic look of the ivory. I love that it's a Pilot pen. It is a little bit more expensive than a Pilot Metropolitan. And it is a steel nib. It did not come with a converter or even a cartridge, actually. But I have a lot of, or I have an extra Con 40 converter. So that's not a big deal. But this is, I guess, a pocket pen from Fountain, from Pilot. Oh my gosh, cannot speak. And it does have a steel fine nib. I just wrote it myself. Steel fine nib which is interchangeable actually with the Pilot Metropolitan, the Pilot Kakuno, all of those nibs are interchangeable. So I do actually have an extra medium nib from a Pilot Kakuno that I could put in here if I wanted to. But with this particular pen, it is a snap cap. Just listen, so satisfying. And because it is a pocket pen, I mean, in my hand, I could certainly use it without posting it, but posting. It is a perfect size pen. It is definitely a little bit wider in the grip than the Pilot Metropolitan, so definitely much more comfortable for me. It does have a little step up here, but it is not sharp at all. You can barely feel it. So even if you rest your fingers on there, it's actually a very comfortable writing experience. And by posting it, it makes it a good full-size pen. So let's compare the size of the Pilot Prera to the sizes of my other pens. So there is the Pilot Prera. Let us compare it to the Pilot Kakuno. So the Kakuno is bigger compare it to the Lamy All-Star, again, bigger, and then we'll compare it to the Pelican M600, bigger. Now, I don't have a Kaveco Sport, and uh, this is probably the smallest pen I have, but let me find Sailor Pro Gear Slim, which I think would probably be closer in size to it. Yeah, it is very close in size. And then the, let's move these down. I have my Pelican M400, which is slightly bigger. So let's look at these posted. Let's look at these uncapped, I mean. So unposted, it is actually pretty much the same size as a Sailor Pro Gear Slim. And you can definitely see the difference in sizes compared to the M400 and the Kakuno and the uh, All Star as well as the M600. But let's see, like when you post the Pro Gear Slim and then you post the Prera. Yeah, the Prera is still smaller than the Pro Gear Slim posted, but what about compared to an unposted Kakuno. It does end up being the size of a full-size pen once it's posted. So I really, really like that in the Pilot Prera. So just a quick writing sample with the Pilot Prera. I haven't cleaned this out or anything, and it looks like the, it was originally dipped in black ink. So that is what I am writing with. And so far, the writing experience is lovely. Pilot nibs are always, always lovely. And I'm so excited to be adding this to my lineup. Oh, there... See, I didn't know that there was a cartridge in there already. So I was like wondering why, but yes, it has a cart. I guess it had the cartridge in it already. So writing with this Pilot Nib, Pilot Nibs are smooth in general anyway. So this is a fine nib and it has very good wet flow. Reverse writing is still, you know, finer than that. It's not something I would recommend doing all the time and just doing a little bit of the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. So this is the Pilot Prera. I absolutely love this and I will, I'm so glad that I ended up purchasing this pen. I love the size of it. I think the width of the grip or the diameter of the grip is perfect for me and that Pilot nib never disappoints. Love that. Now, I didn't know that there was a cartridge in here, but I think I will end up using this or empty that out and put in my own ink for the month of November. So if you're ever curious about the Pilot Prera, I highly recommend this. I can leave a link to one, uh, to an affiliate link for Amazon in the description below. So those are my two new pens. Let's go to the inks. 
So in my recent trip to Toronto for the Planners Gonna Plan conference, I made my way over to Wonder Pens and I purchased their Mystery Ink sample set that has five inks in here. And then on sale, I bought the Troublemakers Kelp Tea. It was 20% off. And then from Sandy of Sand Doodle's desk, she gave me two samples here, which I'm so excited to try. One is called A Leap of Faith, which is a Fiden Pens Dye Mine exclusive, and then one from Ferris Wheel Press. And then Lindsay, who was one of my table mates at the Planners Gonna Plan conference, she gave me this little bottle of Black Ivy. So excited to swatch all of these. So for swatching, I'm using my A6 Hobonichi notebook, which I will leave a link to in the description below, as well as as my Moon Man glass dip pen and a paint paintbrush from my Martini brush set. The first ink I am swatching is Kaveco Sunrise Orange and this is the first Kaveco ink that I've ever tried and so far that orange has really really great shading. It actually does have good flow. It doesn't feel dry at all. Kaveco is not one that I ever thought I would try but I'm glad to at least have tried one. I don't know if I would necessarily keep this or buy a bottle of this but it is a good I say basic orange. And we all need at least one orange in our collection. The next one that I have is Pilot Eroshizuku Hina. No, Hara. Oh gosh, I don't know. Uh, I have to look at the label. But this is one of the newer inks that Pilot came out with, I think, this year or last year. And it's a very, very light pink. Um, I think lighter than actually Kosumosu. And so it's Hana Ikada. Gosh, I'm so sorry for butchering that. But it is a nice light pink, not something I would buy a bottle of, especially if you already have Cosimo soup, but still very pretty anyway, and a good one to try. So the next one that I have in this sample pack is Kyono O2, and it's, oh gosh, how do I pronounce that? Please, I do apologize for how I pronounce these, but this is just a, I guess, a basic black. It's got a little bit of sheen uh, to it, um, but Truthfully, not anything too interesting about this ink. I hate even saying that, but there isn't a lot too interesting about this particular ink. It's Nure Biro, and I know I'm pronouncing that incorrectly, so I apologize. Next one is Noodler's Aircore Blue Black. And it's interesting because when you first put it on the page like that, it just looks black, but then you can see a little bit of the teal. It's not blue, it's teal, but I really do like how this one turned out and the flow of this is really nice. So this one I might end up keeping and using in the future. So the next one that I have from this mystery sample pack is actually Jehurban Emerald of Shavor. And I have never tried this. I've received so many comments about trying this and I'm so glad I got this in the sample pack. It looks blue on the page, doesn't it? It looks blue. But then even when writing with it, I was like, well, what's the big deal with this? But you have to wait for this ink to dry because it is amazing when it dries. So then the bottle that I got from Wonder Pens is Troublemakers Kelp, Troublemaker Inks Kelp Tea. And it looks more green on camera, but it this it's this amazing shading of like brown and green and pink. Like I love it. Some people have said it is a little dry, so I would use it in a wetter pen. The next one is a Diamine and Fiden Pens exclusive called A Leap of Faith. And this one was given to me by Sandy of Sand Doodle's desk. So thank you very much, Sandy. And it's this really dark blue. It was There was so much ink on the glass dip pen. But it's this dark blue with this red sheen. And it's such an interesting color. Thank you so much, Sandy. And then the next one from her is from Ferris Wheel Press. It's called A Lady Rose in Gold. And oh my gosh, I love this one so, so much. It's like this light, dusty pink that's similar to Rue Donc, but it's got this gold or rose gold shimmer. Love, love, love this one so, so much. I'm now trying to figure out which pen I'm going to use it in. Oh, Ferris Wheel Press and their shimmer inks are just amazing absolutely amazing and then the last one is from my table mate Lindsay from planners gonna plan conference she got me a tiny little bottle of this black ivy from diamine and i think it's from one of the ink vent calendars and it really reminds me of um, organic studio walden pond it's like this teal with the red sheen really really pretty color
So there's all the finished ink swatches. I absolutely am in love with Emerald of Chavour, Emerald de Chavour. I can see why now that people recommend this ink. It's got that teal with the gold shimmer and the red sheen. It's just unbelievable. And then, um, what else did I really like? I love kelp tea. I mean, it's still drying, but if I show you like with the sample on the rhodia paper, look at that shading. There's like a little bit of pink, brown, green. It's such an interesting color. I love that. And then you've got the sheen on that leap of faith here. You can really see it now in the writing, the sheen there, but this Ferris wheel press, Lady Rose and Gold. If you look at the sample that I did on the rhodia paper, look at that shimmer. It is absolutely gorgeous. So there's all the inks that I got as well as the two new fountain pens that I have. Absolutely, I'm so grateful for, you know, my, my table mate who got me this ink and Sandy of Sand Doodles getting me this ink. And I loved being able to actually visit Wonder Pens and see things and touch things and, and things like that. So uh, absolutely great. I, I think this, this whole haul here, except for this one, but I mean, the, the majority of this haul really signifies the, the weekend that I had in Toronto and just these are great souvenir inks for me and a souvenir pen for me as well. All right, but that is it for me. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. If you like this video, please leave me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching and have a great day.